Uh, what's up, Journey? We are here, and uh, this is second week of Pray First, and we're excited to dive in this series. Last week, uh, we just kind of introduction on uh, places to pray, how yep. to pray, and so you want to go back and uh, look at that. And what really the purpose of this is, is introducing uh, models of uh, how to pray. So we have uh, this week the Lord's Prayer. Uh, in the future, we're going to be going through the prayer of Jabez and some other prayers. Yep. And I think it's going to be a really, uh, really powerful time in uh, looking at uh, and growing our prayer life. Yeah. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, disciples asked, it's kind of interesting, disciples asked Jesus, uh, which is, should be our question as well a lot of times. Right. How, how uh, should we pray? What how we should pray? we pray? Right. Uh, Luke 11, 11, 1. How yeah. should we pray, Lord? Yeah, how do we and do this? And so immediately <laughs> Jesus responds with... Um, the Lord's Prayer, which we all know, our Father in heaven, hallowed yeah. be thy name. But what we want to be uh, concentrating on today is the part, um, our Father. And I think it's super, super important because um, A.W. Tozer has, I'm going to uh, kind of maybe botch this a little bit, but uh, he has a quote that says um, along the lines of how you view God and your view of God is so important in your walk with him, essentially. And uh, how we view God is really is how is super important in our prayer life and in our walk with Jesus. Yeah. And, um, and so our Father, do we view Him as a Father? Do we view Him as a Master? Right. Um, I think. I mean, if you look at, it's funny that it's in Romans, but he points out that you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when He adopted you as His own. Now we can call Him Abba Father. And I think Jesus right there just kind of, yeah. or Paul writing this sets the tone of that we don't have to approach God fearful as he is a master or some king over us, although he is, right. but he calls us into relationship with him. And um, I think it's important to recognize the difference between uh, viewing him as this master and viewing him as a father. And I think that really uh, speaks a lot to how we view fathers in general. Um, I think people, uh, you know, there may be a lot of brokenness. There may be uh, uh, some um, I guess I don't know the word I'm looking for, a fracture in some people of what a father is. Yeah. And so I think it's important to identify maybe what a father is in your life. I don't know what maybe experiences you've had with your dad. I know uh, your dad was very well invested into your spiritual life. I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that, of maybe a different viewpoint of what a father is. Yeah, I mean, every, every father makes mistakes. Every father um, does things periodically that that fails you except for our heavenly heavenly father and so um my view of dad uh, of my father was um very healthy growing up um i think part of the reason why is he really stepped in when my when my mom passed away when i was five yeah and so out of that um and his investment in me we consistently spent time um during the week uh just in the word and in worshiping together as a family and uh, him leading in that manner uh, in relationship towards me really, really affected uh, the way I view. And so um, I don't know, it, it is a very healthy relationship for me, right. but I think that you can kind of speak to maybe even a different uh, point of view. Yeah, a little bit, I right? think, yeah, for me, like growing up, my dad was very much uh, how I phrase like, the man's man, like he, it wasn't very lovey dovey or super expression. I know your dad was very <laughs> intentional about letting you right. know he, like, he loves. You. Like to this day, like I think back, I'm like I don't, we've had, my, my, me and my dad haven't had a lot of those conversations. <laughs> right. Not in a bad way. It's just, uh, you know, the what I related to as father wasn't necessarily how Jesus and God yeah. recognize it as father, or even as scripture examples what father is. And so, uh, for me, my eye opener was when I became a father when I had Olivia, mm. and I was like, wow, this. This is this is what it means as a father. This is the love, the unconditional love, and and I think about all the times that I get frustrated with Olivia or when she's doing something crazy, and uh, I look at her and sometimes I just laugh even though she's acting crazy. And like right. you know, it, if you're a parent, like uh, when your child's doing something silly, you're like, I can't laugh right now. I can't laugh right now. I, I, and I feel like sometimes God treats us a little bit that way. Of like, yep. He just looks at us so full of love and unconditional love that even when we do make mistakes. It's not that he's angry at us. It's right. he's trying to help bring us along, try to correct us and develop us. And yep. uh, I think it's important to recognize that dynamic of what being a father is and how to love as a father loves. Yeah. Uh, the uh, 
when we're viewing the Lord as a father, we recognize it's a relationship yeah. there, right? And so our obedience is is uh, is uh, birthed out of relationship versus yeah. uh, just legalism and doing things like a slave would do. A slave right. would just be a task list, right? Right. But if we're viewing God as sons and daughters of God, then it's going to be out of relationship of, man, I love God. Yeah. And because I know God, because I'm viewing right. him as my father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right. I'm saying, okay, I know the Lord. And so because I know Lord, I can fall in love with Jesus. And out of love, I'm going to obey. Absolutely. And then out of obedience, you're going to know. It's yeah. almost, I saw one time this triangle of uh, knowing was at the top and then love was the bottom left and then, and then the bottom yeah. right was, uh, was obedience. They all work together right. in one. And so out of that relationship with the Lord comes obedience. Yeah. It comes um, relationship. Yeah. It comes knowing and loving. I think you brought up a good point because I think like even with the Lord's Prayer, a lot of times we look at this as like a religious prayer um, and we kind of maybe some people probably brush it off as something that you actually pray. Um, and I kind of love that this book's going through this because it's yeah. kind of breaking it down a little bit. But it's more than just this religious prayer. When you start to look at the dynamics of what Jesus was teaching us of how to pray, how to view him, uh, it really opens our eyes to how we can approach him. You know, yeah. uh, we are able to approach God in this way as a father. Um, I always think of like the prodigal son, like the, the, the greatest representation of a, of a father in the scripture of, you know, this, the son that ran away and the father was sitting there waiting actually running to him when he saw him coming back mm. and i think when we recognize that god has that love for us that we don't have to prove ourselves that we don't have to earn his love that he's always there willing that you know john says that we love because he first loved yeah. um i think that's a real eye opener of how we can approach god and understanding of who he is in our lives that he is a father he is uh, uh, uh you know abba father he is daddy some people like right. to say I, i'm not i don't not much of the daddy type of person on, in daddy. my prayer but uh, i know <laughs> some people do that feels weird for me too. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I'm not quite there, uh, but I do recognize the importance of rec uh, of seeing him as a father, and yeah. and it's you have to break off that mindset sometimes of the earthly father you may have had in your life in order to truly appreciate what a father represents. Isn't it cool how Jesus was so intentional with this? I think this is intentional that he asked us to pray, "Our Father." Like he was intentional. Remind yourself that I'm your father. Remind yeah. yourself. Remind yourself. So practically speaking, like. Set up some kind of, I had a system for a while where uh, I went through and I reminded myself who God the Father is, yeah. God the Holy Spirit, and uh, God the Son, Jesus. Yeah. And uh, I haven't done that in a while, but I feel like, man, reminding yourself, somehow reminding yourself every single day that when you're coming to the, before the Lord, that he's Father. Yeah. Like, he's Father. He's Father. He's, he's God. He's in control. Yeah. He's sovereign over everything. And he loves us. He wants a relationship with yeah. us. And it's not out of do's and don'ts. It's out, not out of legalism, but right. it's out of... Man, he's our father, and we are his sons. Right. We are his children. We are his daughters. Right. And, and I, uh, I think that's important because I think uh, a lot of times we, maybe we as believers just focus on Jesus. We focus on the one person of the Trinity yep. when there is different dynamics of God that we need to relate to and connect to. Like, yep. he is, yes, he is Christ, our Messiah, our Savior, but he's also our father. He's also yep. He also is that figure in our life that we need to reflect on and come humbly to him in that prayer time, come with love, knowing that he's there to express that love back to us. So I think that's a really good point. And that was Jesus' perspective when he was yeah. walking the earth. Was, yeah. uh, he didn't do anything without the father telling him right. what to do he in that relationship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everything was birthed out of what was God, right. what was Abba Father telling yeah. me to do. And if we can come and have that perspective in our lives, Man, it will change everything. Absolutely. So don't identify yourself as anything other than we are sons and daughters That's of right. God, that we are people of the most high, that we are highly favored, that God is with us. That's and, right. Um, yeah. It's good. Yeah, well, I say we close out in prayer. I mean, I think... Uh, pray first, I think it's a great way to, to lead yeah. us right into prayer. So if you're watching this, wherever you're watching it from, I want to encourage you, uh, find moments throughout your day to pray first. As we talked about uh, finding that place, that specific time, that specific plan. Uh, and this is a great way to start with that plan of recognizing who he is, to connect with him relationally. It's not just with our needs and our wants. It's relationally of your father desires this time with you. He desires this relationship with yeah. you. Um, you know, you're not going to have have a strong relationship with anybody if you just come when you need something or if you just come when it's convenient it needs to be a continued that's a uh, thought that just came to my mind yeah not praying out of reaction yeah 
that praying out of relationship absolutely uh, continually. So right. I mean, if you're spending time with the Lord daily basis, then when you encounter something, you're not praying reactionally. Yeah. It's a lifestyle that's already good. happening already there. That's good. Well, let's pray. Let's do it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Father, we just God, we invite you to yes, wherever Jesus. they're, uh, whoever's listening to this now, Father God, would you speak to their hearts, Lord, and just. God, help bring, Lord, healing maybe first off to that word Father, God. Maybe someone who has had a different experience with that term yes, Father, God. Lord, that you would just bring healing to their hearts right now, God. Yes, and, Lord, Jesus. that your love would shine through and show yes, what Jesus. an authentic yes, Father Jesus. sounds like, Father God. Not an earthly one, but, Father, a heavenly one whose whose promises are always true, whose goodness is is always great, Father God. Lord, yes. uh, Lord may we recognize, Lord, that you are always true to your word, Father God, and you will never fail us, Father God. And so we can can approach you not as slaves or those who need uh, something from you, Father God, but as those in relationship with you, Lord. And uh, God, may today we just recognize that, God, that you are our Father, Father yes, God. God. Thank you, Lord, for what you did for us, God. Thank you for first loving us. Thank you for putting this, I mean, if you look at the Bible, this whole gospel plan of relationship with you, Father God, we praise you for yes, seeking relationship with yes, us so God. much that you would send your son yes. to, Lord, create this way mm. to have relationship with you, thank Father you, God. God. So we thank you for being thank a you. loving Father. We thank you for being a good God. And we ask today as we approach you, God, as we approach you in a, a relationship dynamic, Father God, that you would see our hearts, God, that you would heal our hearts of anything that needs to be Jesus. healed, Father God, yes, that we can Jesus. come to you, God, with open hearts to your goodness, Father God, open yes, hearts Jesus. to uh, express ourselves to you, Father God, and in, in, in such a way, Father, where we yes, thank God. you for thank what you're God. doing, God, in our lives, and where we ask you continue to uh, move in us and teach us in these times lord yes amen amen so remember hey in everything you do pray first don't react but pray pray first live out of a knowledge and an understanding that you are sons and daughters of god that's right this world's awesome. crazy we gotta pray we gotta pray <laughs> we gotta pray <laughs> Thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll be on again uh, next Thursday at 5 o'clock. Again, be digging through this, learning, growing, uh, getting in those times of prayer with God. We love you guys, and thanks for joining.